Hey guys, Anime Gypsy here with another One Piece review. This is One Piece chapter 904. And uh, to be quite honest, I thought this chapter was going to have some groundbreaking uh, revelations, but you know, it was an episode, it was a chapter with character introductions and world building instead, which isn't bad, but you know, I, I kind of prefer the uh, earth shattering uh, <laughs> revelations about the Viking Century and stuff, which. Don't get me wrong, that will definitely happen later on in this arc. I guarantee it. It has to. I mean, a meeting with those who know. You know, Mary Joa is not only where the reverie happens, it's also where the Gorosei are. It's also where the admirals are going to be. It's also where, you know, world government officials who are in the know, know, and are there. So, uh... Stuff's going to happen, and I, I guarantee you we're going to get more introductions to people in the world government sector that we haven't been introduced to in this arc as well. Not only the Marines, the world government sector, you know, the people from CP9, that sort of thing. I'm guessing we're going to get introduced to some CP0 people and some people that are, you know, associated with the Gorosei. That, that's honestly my guess. Now... The revolutionary, the, uh, the revolutionary army's declaration of war that was revealed this chapter. I do not think that they're going to declare. Sorry, that they're going to go full out during the reverie. I think that there's going to be like a symbolic declaration of war. But I don't do not think that it's going to be a full on war because the war is going to happen. Don't get me wrong, but if you put in all your pieces. And you attack at the reverie when the world government is, is at its strongest, when all the admirals are there, when you have uh, the fleet admiral there, when you have all those folk. That, that makes absolutely no sense. It would make sense if, say, Fujitora died in Dress Rosa. Then that would make sense. It would make sense if, like, Kizaru just, you know, died in his sleep. You know, but no, it, it would make sense if Green Bull was, el was going to be elsewhere. But we know for a fact that the admirals will have to be there in the reverie because it's a meeting. It's a meeting between all of the kings in the world. So, and yeah, and the Celestial Dragons are there too, which, you know, big, big thing. It just, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. So I, I think it's going to be like a symbolic declaration of war similar to Luffy burning down the world government flag. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the commanders. Honestly, some of the commanders, actually one of the commanders is very meh right now, and this is Morley. Now, the, but there's a big deal with Morley. Morley is the first giant that ate a devil fruit. And honestly, good for him, but I don't see his significance. I don't see him being the strongest of the commanders. I honestly don't, but at the same time, you know, he's an important player. Because I honestly think those 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 commanders are powerful. Uh, not like Yonko commander powerful or admiral level powerful. I think they're all like Dofi level powerful. Where each and every one of them could probably tangle with Dofi one on one. Honestly. like uh, that, That's just my opinion on the matter. That, that's the way I see it. Because, well, I'm speaking too soon because we were just introduced to those folk. But if Sabo's bounty is 600 uh, mil, then, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't see them being, uh, sure, I mean, they, there's no direct correlation between bounty and power, but there's an indirect correlation bet between them in terms of the perception of power that the world government perceives you have, and then they're usually accurate, but not all the time. Like Luffy's new bounty, <laughs> Luffy ain't admiral level, Luffy, Luffy doesn't deserve that bounty. If Luffy goes to, uh, goes up against someone who actually deserves that one billion berry bounty, I don't think you could take him out alone. He, he couldn't take take down Dofi alone. He couldn't take uh, Cracker down alone. There's no way he could, could he take someone like Kaido out alone. No, no, no. Kaido's going to slap a bitch. Don't get me wrong. That, that's going to happen. Now, that aside, we talked about Morley. Let's talk about Lindbergh. Am I the only one getting rocket vibes off of this guy? Because I'm getting some strong rocket vi vibes, you know? A raccoon looking thing, well, not a raccoon, don't get me wrong, but a small fuzzy little animal that could make electronic devices and has like a machine gun with him and, you know, is, is tech savvy. 
Persona aside, kind of looks like a ripoff of Rocket, but I'm digging it. I can't wait to see what this guy has got up his sleeve. And I don't doubt for a second that this guy is powerful. He looks smart and powerful. Like, his power level isn't directly correlating to his hockey game or whatever, or his duration. Instead, his power is coming from his intelligence and his weaponry. That, that's what I could tell from this point in time in terms of how powerful this guy is and he looks pretty damn strong uh, now Morley actually I don't want to talk about Morley Karasu Karasu is pretty impressive because as far as we know he was in the North Blue during Dress Rosa yet we've seen his power transport Sabo the crow power so what is this guy's range yeah, just, just think about it. if he was in the North Blue when Sabo used his ability to transport. OP! OP! Okay. That's right. Finally. Let's go to, Bel uh, to Bello Betty. And this is the thing. All of their names are, in the front are shaded black. Except for her. Hers is shaded uh, uh, gray. And there are two things that said are unique to the others you know, make her very, 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 very unique and important. The first one, her powers, her devil fruit, the pep, pep fruit. Ah, uh, That's OP. If you could give everyone in, a, in an army a power boost, imagine, like, we need to know more details about that, the nature of that power boost. Is it, like, quantitative, like, you get this much power, or is it... You know, you multiply the power twice. Uh, if it's you multiply the power twice or something like that, then, geez, because, <laughs> Jesus. If you have someone like an admiral and you do that to an admiral, they might become as powerful as a Yonko temporarily. It's, 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 it's OP, it's overpowered, it's, it's a pretty strong power. And I don't doubt that her combat ability is on point. I, I do not doubt that at all. Now... Finally, the second thing that sets her different. If you realize all of the commanders are from a different section of the world, and they command different armies and sections of the world, uh, Karasu is the north, Lind Lindberg is the south, yada, 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 and I'm guessing this correlates to the different seas, so Karasu is in the north blue, Lindberg is in the south blue. Now, where is Bello Betty? She's in the east blue. And guess what? She's a female. Yes, she's a fertile female. I'm not saying that she is Luffy's mother, but uh, I'm not going to rule that possibility out because of everyone we have met so far, she is the most likely to be Luffy's mother. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you liked the review, please leave a like. Until next time, guys, this is Anime Gypsy, and I'm out. See you guys later. Bye.